Just when you thought the AI updates were done for 2025, we got hit by one more. And this one is a pretty big deal. OpenAI just launched Atlas, their ChatGPT powered browser. And Perplexed released Comet, and browser companies like Arc are rebuilding around AI too. And to be honest, this feels like the beginning of part two of the browser wars. But after doing some digging into these new AI browsers, I'm honestly not sure if I'm more excited or concerned. Because yes, they are impressive, but there are some serious security questions we need to talk about. So, should you actually switch to an AI browser? Let's figure it out. Okay, so first of all, what is an AI browser and what makes it different from traditional browsers like Firefox or Chrome? A traditional browser is pretty straightforward. It's a window to the internet, right? You type in your URL, the page loads, and you click around. You might have some tabs open, but each one is its own separate thing. You're in control of where you go and what you do. But AI browsers flip that completely. Instead of you doing all the work, there's an AI assistant built into the core of your browsing experience. And I don't mean a chatbot you open in a separate tab, no. The AI is right there, seeing everything you're doing across all of your tabs, understanding the context, and ready to help instantly. So what does that actually look like? Well, every AI browser has three core features that make it different. First, there's the sidecar assistant, which is kind of the main draw of the AI browsing. Imagine you're on a motorcycle, right? and your AI is sitting in the sidecar next to you. It sees where you're going, it knows what's on your screen, but you're still the one driving. There's no more copying and pasting into ChatGPT. You just ask, and it already knows what you're looking at. Your chat is integrated naturally into your browsing experience. Is it a browser or a chatbot? To be honest, it's kind of both. The second feature is browser memory. Unlike normal browsing history, which just saves URLs you visited, an AI browser memory remembers the content and context of everything you looked at. It's like the difference between a list of places you've been versus having a photographic memory of every conversation you've had there. The AI learns from your browsing the same way it learns from your chat history. You can ask it about things you looked at days ago, and it can provide you with a summary adapting its responses to you. Okay, so the third feature is agent mode, and this is where things get really interesting. The AI doesn't just help you browse anymore, but it can actually do things for you now. Agent mode can navigate pages and interact with websites as if you were the one doing it, while you simply sit back and watch, or do something else entirely. The individual features vary, but all of these AI browsers have a feature that can fill out forms or even book hotel stays for you. This is fundamentally different from traditional browsing where you, the user, are always in control. But it's also where the security concerns come in, which we'll tackle a little bit later in the video. But before we get into why these companies are racing to build these browsers, here's something worth noting. Atlas, Comet, Dia, they're all built on Chromium the same open source engine powering Chrome. So even as they challenge Google's dominance, they're still building on Google's foundation. Which brings us to the big question here. With all these new features and capabilities, what's the actual point here? Why build this into a browser instead of just improving ChatGPT or other chatbots? Well, because these companies see browsers as the foundation for something bigger. AI agents that can truly act on your behalf. Think about it. The browser already has access to everything, right? Your logins, your history, your context. It's the one place where AI can see and do across your entire digital life. OpenAI wants Atlas to become what Sam Altman calls a true super assistant for your entire digital life. Perplexity sees it as the only way to build agents that actually work. And the browser company believes it's how we will interact with technology in five years. That level of access is what makes it powerful, and each company built something completely different to harness it. So that's kind of the vision. But what did they actually build? Let's start with these two heavyweights, Atlas and Comet, as they're both going for maximum power, full agentic browsing, complete context awareness, the whole package. Let's see what sets them apart. Let's start off with OpenAI's Atlas browser, which is kind of the most popular of the group. So OpenAI launched their browser only a month ago, and it's their big move to compete against Google Chrome. So you just know they're putting everything they can behind it. 
Atlas puts ChatGPT at the front and center of your browsing experience. So as soon as you open up a new tab, you're greeted with ChatGPT's familiar chat box, eerily similar to Google's new tab screen. Plus, there's an Ask ChatGPT button at the top of every page you visit. Your browsing experience starts with a ChatGPT conversation, changing the app from a tab you keep open in the background to a feature that is always available to you. So OpenAI wants Atlas to replace Google as your starting point for everything online and with over 800 million users per week, pff, it's definitely on its way there. It's already affecting how people search for information and how digital marketers work with SEO. And now it's coming for how you browse and interact with every web page. So who is Atlas for? If you're already a ChatGPT power user, then Atlas is going to fit seamlessly into your workflows. It uses the same models you're used to and will provide the same context rich summaries as any question you asked on ChatGPT. Basically, if you already have ChatGPT as a pin tab on your browser, getting Atlas will make browsing even easier for you. It's the generalist, the most common, familiar and user friendly of AI browsers with a minimal learning curve. There's just one major catch. The base version of Atlas is currently only available on Mac OS. If you only use Windows or you're looking for a mobile app version, you'll have to stick with the ChatGPT app for now. On the other hand, there is ChatGPT's main competition, Comet. Perplexity really beat everyone to the punch with Comet. They launched their AI browser back in July, but originally it was an exclusive feature for Perplexity Mac subscribers. So if you weren't willing to shell out 200 bucks per month, you had to wait for the public release from last October. Just like Atlas, Comet is about making Perplexity's AI-powered search the default browsing experience, rather than a separate app or a website. Comet Assistant is always available in your search bar, ready to help with whatever you need. But their strategy is a little different from Atlas. Perplexity's MO has always been about research and analysis. Long before any AI model, Perplexity was giving citation-first answers to every query. That continues with Comet. What sets this browser apart is the comprehensive tool suite, dedicated interfaces for different kinds of searches. You have the Discover for personalized content recommendations, spaces for organizing different projects, um, shopping assistance that compares prices across retailers, travel planning tools, finance tracking, and sports updates. It's really trying to be an all-in-one solution. And these aren't just prompts with different names, don't know. They're purpose-built tools with their own structured data. Perplexity is your answer engine. It's for the researchers, the cost comparers, uh, those who want a robust assistant that can help with more than day-to-day -day tasks. It works best when you do deep dives for information rather than just basic summarizing. And talking about price, Comet Browser is completely free now. But if you decide to shell out those $200 per month for Perplexity Max, you get an additional background assistant and email assistant that can perform some of the same features as ChatGPT's agent mode. Your email assistant can draft replies, organize your inbox, and schedule meetings, while your background assistant learns from how you use Comet and can offer suggestions before you even think of them. But there's a trade-off though. This browser is hungry and it's known for its heavy resource demand. Comet uses a lot more of your system's memory than Chrome, so if you have an older computer, it could really slow it down. So, you've got the two heavyweights, right? Atlas and Comet, both trying to do everything. But there are a couple of other browsers taking completely different approaches that are worth knowing about. The browser company put their Chrome competitor, Arc, in maintenance-only mode so they can focus on Dia, their own AI-first browser. Arc had a cult following among power users looking for a Chrome alternative, so there's a good chance that Dia might just become the indie alternative to Atlas and Comet. The interesting thing about Dia, though, is that it's intentionally minimalistic. It's just kind of a Chromium browser with AI baked in. There's no feature overload or trying to do everything at once, just a clean browser with an AI chat when you need it. They also have this special skills library on their website with sample prompts to complement your browsing for everything from color analysis to finding the right word in your email. If the security concerns with full agentic browsing make you uncomfortable, Dia's minimalist approach might be more appealing. 
less power, but also less risk. If you want AI assistance without handing over complete control, Dia might just be what you're looking for. Okay, so this next browser is kind of even hard to call it a browser, to be honest. So Nemo comes from Nemo Planet, a startup founded by ex-Google Chrome engineers, and they took a totally different approach to its design, ditching the traditional URL bar and tabs for a canvas-like interface with AI cards that combine different apps into custom workspaces. Interestingly enough, it's still based on Chromium. You can ask Nemo to create a personal financial dashboard from your sheets, Notion, and Gmail, and it builds a custom interface for you in the browser. It isn't trying to beat Chrome at its own game, but instead, Nemo is rethinking the browser entirely. It feels like it's orchestrating apps into workspaces. It's currently invite only, has a steeper learning curve than Dia, and honestly, might be a little bit too experimental for most people. But it's the only one actually rethinking what a browser should be rather than just adding AI to Chrome. Worth keeping an eye on if you're curious about where this could go. So these all sound pretty incredible, right? AI assistants that remember everything, agents that can book your travel, and browsers that can understand context across your entire digital life. But before you rush to download one, we need to address the massive elephant in the room. And sadly, that's security. And here's the thing, these security challenges affect all AI browsers to varying degrees, from the feature pack heavyweights like Atlas and Comet to the minimalist options like Dia. It's an industry-wide problem, actually. For AI browsing to really work the way we imagine, it needs extensive access to your information. And we're talking access to your emails, calendar, passwords, payment information, browsing history, everything. This is a lot of trust to place in these systems when we don't really know what AI browsing is capable of. If AI chat models are a black box, then AI browsing is a black hole. So it makes sense to pause and really think about what information you're handing over. The biggest threat to your browsing is called prompt injection, hidden instructions on web pages that can override your commands to the AI. This can be a line of code buried in the page source or even something as simple as white text on white background. Anything that you won't see on a page, but the AI will still be able to read and follow leading to data leaks, which you won't even notice until it's too late. And get this, OpenAI's own chief information security officer, Dane Stuckey, had openly admitted that the prompt injection remains a frontier unsolved security problem and our adversaries will spend significant time and resources to find ways to make chat gpt agents fall for these attacks perplexity's team acknowledged similar challenges too saying that this is a security problem that the entire industry is grappling with if that's not enough for you security researchers at brave recently tested whether they could trick perplexity's comet browser into displaying dangerous prompts and they succeeded they also tested these browsers and found that vulnerabilities persist even after the companies attempted to fix them. Yikes. So think about it. Despite the fact that we're charging ahead with this new innovation, the companies behind the major players still haven't figured out how to fully protect your data. Beyond the technical vulnerabilities, there's also the privacy angle. These browsers are essentially watching everything you do online. Yes. They offer incognito modes, and the companies promise that you can opt out of having AI models trained on your data. But you're still creating a massive database of your digital life in one place that you don't own. And since you don't own the AI's memory, even if you can download your data, you can't control who has access to it. If you're handling any sensitive data, you need to seriously think about whether you're comfortable with an AI system having complete access to that information and the ability to remember it. And you might be thinking, why can't they just patch this? Well, security experts say it's not a bug, it's kind of a fundamental to how AI processes information. As long as the AI reads content from untrusted websites and can take actions based on that content, there will always be a way to manipulate it. Now, the companies are trying to work on this. They're implementing layers of protection. That's like red teaming, model training to ignore malicious instructions, uh, detection systems, and uh, user controls. But these are just kind of mitigation strategies for now and not solutions. It's a cat and mouse game where new attack methods keep emerging. So listen, here's my take. 
AI browsers are genuinely impressive technology and they show us where browsing is headed, but right now it looks like they're beta products that aren't ready for anything critical. The vision is exciting, yes, but the security fundamentals haven't caught up yet. If you want to test them, stick to casual browsing for now. Research, learning, exploring, but for anything sensitive, your bank, your work email, personal documents, I'd wait until these security issues get actually solved and not just mitigated. And also, keep in mind that this space is evolving fast. Microsoft is slowly integrating Copilot into Edge, Google is expanding Gemini into Chrome, and even small players like Opera are jumping in with their Neon browser. So Chrome hasn't faced real competition in over a decade, so expect more announcements from major AI players in the upcoming months. Looks like Browser Wars are officially back. So what's your take from all of this? Are you excited about AI browsers or do the security concerns outweigh the benefits? Let me know in the comment section down below and make sure you subscribe to Hostinger Academy as we post videos like this every single week. And if you're interested in how AI is transforming search and SEO more broadly, I highly recommend you check out this playlist over here where we have videos breaking it down. So check it out next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.